So in this video, we're going to review some basics of modeling parts in SOLIDWORKS as we create the I-beam from our topic reading that we'll use for the finite element analysis example. So first open SOLIDWORKS and create a new part. <clears throat> and the first thing we'll do is we'll um, sketch the cross section of the I-beam. So we need to select a plane. Let's do the front plane, go to the sketch tab, and create a new sketch. I like to, to keep the origin at a special location. So as we select the line tool here, let's make that the start of our first line that'll be in the upper right-hand corner of the I-beam. Uh, note also these automatic constraints that appear uh, this in this little yellow box, that horizontal line that makes this line uh, horizontal uh, or vertical in this case. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to draw the top edge of that, uh, the flange, and then the side of the web. And uh, now notice these little dashed blue lines that occur. Those are not actually constraints, just guidelines, but we'll uh, learn how to make uh, those lines collinear in a moment. All right, I'll make this uh, line intentionally, not horizontal, yeah, so we can see how to fix that. And finish off the cross section of our I-beam here. Hit escape to get out of that tool. And now let's add some uh, constraints. So uh, first let's make this line horizontal if we mess that up somehow. Uh, you can see when I click on the line, all these options appear and one of them is make horizontal. If I then click on the line again, uh, you'll see this little green box appear that tells you what constraints apply to it. <clears throat> no, that's not where I want. I'm just gonna drag that line down. Okay, so first let's make the outer edges, the flanges collinear. So I'll click the first one and then shift click the second and then select this icon for to make them collinear. Now, when you uh, click on just one of them, you'll see one, two, these two are uh, constrained to be on the same line. So those faces will be in the same plane. We can do the same thing over here, click, shift click, collinear. <clears throat> and I think we have uh, everything set more or less. Now let's add some dimensions. So according to the reading, we wanted to make this IP in five inches wide. Uh, by the way, if your default settings are different from inches, you can come down here and click on the unit system and scroll to the one you like and, and select it. <clears throat> let's make the flange half an inch thick. For our, our reading. Oh, I've, I've, I've missed a couple of relations. We'll make this one half an inch thick also. And now so that we don't have to set that dimension twice or so that these things will stay as we wish, as we change dimensions, we'll make those lines collinear and these lines collinear. All right, let's also make the web in the center half an inch thick. And let's put it in the middle of the flange. So we'll select these two lines and then this will be 2.25 inches, which is half an inch, excuse me, five inches minus half an inch divided by two. <clears throat> and we've got one more thing to define, which is the height of the I-beam. And we said, let's make it 10 inches. Okay, so um, you can see that everything has turned, all the lines have turned black and that's good. Um, if something is not fully defined or constrained, the line will still be blue. And uh, then when you later change a dimension or something, uh, the whole sketch can, can change in unexpected or undesired ways. So make sure everything is fully defined by either these kind of constraints or dimensions. So everything should be black before you move on. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our cross section sketched. Let's go to features and we will extrude a base. And in this case, uh, we'd like it to be 100 inches long. <clears throat> if we zoom out and I'm using the, the scroll uh, button in the center of my mouse to, to zoom in and out, uh, we can see the preview here. If I hold down that center button and move the mouse around, I can uh, change the orientation. Everything looks good. And I'll hit the green check mark. Okay, so now we've got the main feature of our I-beam. Let's add the holes. So first of all, I'll select the top surface 
and click this normal to icon so I can look right at the surface, scroll in, <clears throat> go to sketch and create a new sketch. And I'll choose the circle tool this time and make a couple of circles. These are gonna be our holes, escape. We said we'd like them to be half an inch in diameter, 0.5 and 0.5. And we didn't actually say how far they were from the edges in the in the top of reading, but let's make it one inch from the top, one inch from the side. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Double click that to change it, one inch. And do the same thing here. And then we'll use our constraint trick to set these to be the same distance from that top. Now I go to features, extruded cut, and I don't want this to be just to a particular depth. I'd like to go through everything. So I'll say through all. <clears throat> and if I zoom out and, and rotate a little, you can see we now have our two holes that go through both flanges as well. Well set there. Now we, we wanted these holes to be all up and down the length of the I-beam. So uh, let's make a linear pattern. If I select cut extrude, and then uh, I choose this linear pattern tool, <clears throat> I can make a, a, a sequence of these things. So the first thing we need to do is select the direction in which we'd like the pattern to occur. And so we'll click that edge. Uh, now the distance between instances of the pattern, 10 inches. Uh, so we'll get, um, and let's do 10 of them. So we get 10 across the length of the beam. And I think the default is two here, but if you say 10, it'd be good. And if we zoom out and look at the preview, that looks uh, as we expected. So green check mark. <clears throat> and now you can see we've got a bunch of those little holes along the top and bottom flanges of the IP. All right, so the last feature we need to match our, uh, our example part are those big holes in the middle of the web. So let's Take a look at the web, zoom in on one end, and go to sketch, new sketch, circle tool, draw a circle here, make it five inches in diameter in this case. And let's also make it five inches from the edges. And that will make it centered vertically and not too close to the end of the part. And if we select that sketch, go to features, extruded cut. Once again, through all green check mark, happy. And then let's make another pattern. So select the cut, make a linear pattern, 10 inches, 10 of them along that line. Let's see, we're getting just what we like. Green check mark, and we've got it. All right. Uh, there's So those are the, the features that we most often use when creating parts in SolidWorks. There's one other that comes up quite frequently, and that is the fillet. So let's uh, just add a fillet here to see how that goes. If we click, if we are in features and we go to fillet, uh, then we can select an edge and it will automatically add a rounded surface that's uh, tangent to the two uh, surfaces that come in to create that edge. <clears throat> and this is especially helpful in internal corners to prevent stress concentrations, which is the way you um, often see it used in, in uh, mechanical design. All right, so you can see that's being previewed. If we, and we can select the, the diameter there, let's say a quarter of an inch, green check mark. And now you'll see that these sharp internal corners have been rounded out. All right, that's the end of our uh, quick review of how to create uh, parts in SOLIDWORKS. And in our next video, we will go over the basics of finite element analysis for stress in SOLIDWORKS.